Hey everybody, Scott Hervey with Scott Hervey Photography Art and More. Something I'm doing today is going to be a little bit different for my channel. When I'm not designing any of my paintings or designs of my products or different arts and crafts, one of the things I like to do is to actually go out fishing. I spend a lot of time outdoors with my photography. When I'm not doing photography in the off time, I'm either snorkeling, fishing, spending time at the beach. So today's going to be something a little bit different. It's a catch and cook, although I did not film the actual catching part of these fish. The fish we're going to be using today is a black drum and also a sheep's head. The two fish, they kind of look the same. They both have the black and silver stripes and kind of a similar head. But the sheep fish looks more like a zebra, whereas the black drum, the stripes are actually spread a little bit out. And there are different size limits when it comes to being able to keep this. One of the things I used to do when I was a kid uh, was go camping a lot with my father. And when I spent a lot of time outdoors during the fall, winter, and early spring months when we weren't camping, I was either hunting or fishing. So I used to save up everything that I hunted, everything that I caught and just put it in the freezer and then take it with me when I go camping on the weekend so my meat would be already frozen. So this little style I'm gonna to do today, even though I am gonna do it on the stove, it is gonna be something that you can actually do at the campsite if you have a frying pan or do what I used to do. You can make these little boats out of tin foil and put all your seasoning and everything inside of there and your fish inside the tin foil and then just cook it on the grill. But today I'm actually using a pan. One little thing that I'm going to do a little bit different is I am not going to dredge my fish in any milk or eggs. When you go camping, milk and eggs tend not to keep well in the cooler roughly 24 hours if that. So when I used to go camping for a week or so, milk and eggs were not an option. So I'm just going to use the wetness and the moisture of the fish. Okay, so here are the fish fillets and fish chunks I'm going to be using today. They were thawing out from my freezer. The sheep's head and the black drum is kind of a white meat, kind of a flaky meat. I don't like to leave the skin on my fish only because I don't know what recipe I'm going to be making up at the time. So these here just happen don't have to have the skin on it. This is what I'm going to be cooking up. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator just for a little bit while I make my seasoned coating. So for the first step of my season coating, what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, plastic baggie, some Ritz crackers, and we're going to go ahead and put them inside the bag and mash them up really good. You don't have to use Ritz crackers. You can use panko. You can use breadcrumbs. I just don't have to have any of that. I'm in the house today, but the nice thing is when you go camping, you're probably going to have Ritz crackers anyway for little snacks. As you're squishing these down, you can use a rubber mallet. I don't have one, but if you're out in the woods, um, any sort of can any utensil will do. Use, you know, you can use your fist. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this out into my bowl now. But you can use any type of uh, Ritz cracker that you want to use. These here that I'm using are actually the garden vegetable flavored. So my Ritz cracker's got a little bit of seasoning on it. Now because I'm trying to make this healthy, I'm not really going to add that much salt. Um, the Ritz cracker already has salt in it, but I just want to probably add just a little uh, pinch to season that up a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead add some pepper to that and just going to add a little bit of uh, Italian seasoning. Now, these are not expensive spices at all. As you can see, I'm using just uh, regular old salt, regular old uh, McCormick's black pepper, using um, just regular old uh, seasoning. I think I got this at the Christmas tree shops or whatever, but you can use whatever. Italian seasoning you like. Um, not using garlic salt here. I'm just using regular garlic powder because I really don't want any extra added salt, but I love garlic. So we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle some of that in there. And because it's seafood, definitely going to add some Old Bay seasoning. Now these are spices that, um, you know, they come in these little convenient travel things, but you can go ahead and put this all together in a plastic bag and stick it in your backpack or with your other camping stuff so that when you take it with you it'll be a lot easier than carrying around these little bottles. 
And now that I got that in here, I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick toss. If you could actually smell through the camera, you would actually smell this uh, aroma of all the different spices and seasonings I'll put in here. Some people add, like to add um, crushed pepper flakes, but my wife is going to have a little bit of this dish too. And she's not really into the hot and spicy food. What I'm using today is I'm going to use a non-stick frying pan, medium heat. Because I really just want the butter to melt. I don't want it to scorch. For that amount of fish, I'm going to want to use half a stick of butter. Pan's starting to heat up a little bit. Get the butter in there. It's going to swirl it around. I really do not want this to scorch. I just want to have kind of a melted butter so that I can like pan fry these. If you were out camping, you could actually make a boat out of tin foil, put your butter, put your fish, your seasoning and everything all in it. Just put it on the grill and cook it that way. I'm just melting the butter. So now I've got my seasoning and I got my fish. Let's go ahead and dip it in my crumbs. You know, get that slightly coated. And then just drop it in the pan. It's okay if you make a mess in the kitchen. Clean it up afterwards. There's another piece. I'm just going to go ahead and drop all these in. So my wife just stepped in a little bit. She's helping me by turning over the fish to make sure it doesn't burn. That's getting nice and brown. For a little extra seasoning, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some tomato and fry it in there as well. Some people actually put the uh, cherry tomato in beforehand as they're melting down the butter for some extra flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm just going ahead and just putting it in right on top here. Because um, I really don't want my tomato cooked down too much. I still want it to be a little bit firm, but yet um, I just don't want it to be totally cold. Got our tomatoes in there. Look how that's browning up nicely. Delicious. Delicious. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, finish cooking this and I'll show you when it's all plated up. So this pot just came out of the pan. It's all nicely coated, nicely browned. Oh man. Oh. For the first try of this recipe, I think I seasoned that perfectly. Hmm. That's good. That is good. She's moving on to a crab meat. If you're wondering about how to cook imitation crab meat, I'm going to let my wife Jennifer take it from here. Just put a little lemon, salt, and pepper, and garlic. Okay. Right now I'm just seasoning the imitation crab meat. I just put mm -hmm. some lemon on it. I'm going to put a little a bit of dill and Old Bay on it. Since you've seasoned with butter and seasoned my pan, I'm not going to go ahead and add any extra fat. It's okay. already pre-cooked and pre so we're just going to go ahead and add that. So yeah, the crab meat's already um, pre-cooked as it comes, mm -hmm. the imitation crab. Imitation crab is actually pollock is and thing? some other type of fish. There's our little uh, seafood medley we're going to be having for dinner. If you're wondering what to pair this with, white wine is always a good thing to pair fish with. Mm -hmm. If you're out camping, a lot of you guys will probably have beer. I suggest Angry Orchard a Stone Dry for an ale. Just having got a little bit of apple ale here tonight. Something light, white, and mellow really goes good with the with the fish combination. Hmm. Tomatoes got a little bit of seasoning on it, just from the pan being seasoned and what it picked up off the fish. Not too much. It's really good. This yeah, is the fish. Mm. Three of those just melting together in my mouth. It's really good. So I want to let you go. I want to enjoy this meal. This has been uh, my first catch and cook. It's been really good, really tasty. I suggest trying this recipe. Until next time, this is Scott Hervey with Scott Hervey Photography, Art, and More, where I do uh, tech videos, local travel fishing videos, things to do, and also art and photography. So until next time, this is my wife Jennifer who actually helped with the meal at the end when she came home from work. And we'll talk to you then. Mm -hmm. Bye.